Welcome back to Dirty 20 everyone. Today we continue with our dissection of some of our favorite monsters in the Monster Manual with a look at the Displacer Beast. Let's get on with the show. Thanks for joining us lovely people another kitty cat today after having looked at the rakshasa last week link to that video in the description below but today's beast the displacer beast is a different kind of beast uh, you'll see what i mean inspired either by kuerl from a e van vogt's 1939 short story black destroyer or possibly a marvel comic book this cat-like creature with six legs and two tentacles is a ferocious one that gets its name from its ability to displace light, making it seem like it's several feet from its actual location. Now, this makes their hide quite valuable, as it can be used to make magic items such as the Cloak of Displacement. This brings me to the first way that you might include this monster in your campaign. Now, unlike the Rakshasa, the Displacer Beast is a little bit more of a one-encounter kind of beast, as opposed to a potential big bad evil guy for lower level characters. But they are, once again, classic D&D. And just look at that artwork. I would definitely use this creature in a sort of gladiatorial scenario. I can imagine our party of heroes landing on a far off shore where they are captured and sold to the circus where they must fight to win their freedom. I would have them face a number of exotic animals including without a doubt a displacer beast. Now looking at their connection and background uh, with regards to the Feywild one even made it as the front cover model for the um, alternate cover version of The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, which just calls to me every time I see it. And in it... Sorry, I, I need a minute because this is just too adorable. There's a Displacer Beast kitten. What's that? It has a stat block. But that means you can... You can kill it. Nine hit points. Please don't kill the Displacer Beast kitten. Please. But in law, they roamed the twilight lands of the Feywilds. Before being captured and trained by the Unseelie Court. The Unseelie Court being the dark reflection of the Seelie Court, which is kind of a pantheon of elven deities and uh, uh, an organization that fights for good in the Fae. The Unseelie Court are just kind of the evil side. But the warriors of that court would selectively breed displacer beasts, reinforcing their predatory and ferocious nature using them to hunt unicorns, pegasi, and other wondrous creatures. But they did their job a little too well, and the beast's malevolent intelligence allowed them to escape their captors. Roaming freely in the Feywild, they soon attracted the attention of the Seelie Court, who, along with their blink dog companions, drove the displacer beasts to the fringes of the Feywild where many would cross over to the Material Plane. So if your party are exploring the wilds of the Feywilds, coming across a pack of Displacer Beasts, well, it seems almost guaranteed. Now, although they are kind of mindless beasts that can't be reasoned with, they are also terrifying predators that not only kill for food, but also for sport, toying with their victims to entertain themselves. The scene from Jurassic Park kind of comes to mind.
Now, I think this would make for an amazing combat encounter. Just a pack of displacer beasts in the forests of a Feywild. But they can also be used as additional pieces in a more nuanced encounter. Let's say that a local hobgoblin warlord has been pillaging the villages in the region. He has placed all the grain, foodstuffs, and coin that he's stolen from the villages in an old abandoned temple, guarded by an elite unit of displacer beast handling hobgoblin warriors. Here you could have the party face a hobgoblin captain along with some regular hobgoblins and a displacer beast for a lower level one to three party. Or even a warlord, a goblin shaman, some hobgoblins and a couple of displacer beasts for a more mid-level three to six party. We will, by the way, be doing a video on hobgoblins because I really love the way they're presented in 5th edition. But before we jump into the monster manual to take a look at the stat block for the Displacer Beast, please make sure that you have subscribed and hit that bell icon to not miss a single upload that we make. Okay then, guys, let's check out the stat block of the Displacer Beast on page 81 of the monster manual. Now, first off, we see that the challenge rating is of three, uh, making this only a serious challenge if it's either uh, one part of a roster of monsters for an encounter, such as our scenario we mentioned with the hobgoblins, or perhaps a pack of them. Now, be aware that in 5e, as soon as your party is outnumbered, the odds are very much against the party, even with creatures of a challenge rating of a half. But back to the Displacer Beast, at an AC of 13 makes them not too hard to hit. But let's take a quick look at Displacement, which is one of their abilities. Displacement. The Displacer Beast projects a magical illusion that makes it appear to be standing near its actual location, causing attack rolls against it to have disadvantage. If it is hit by an attack, this trait is disrupted until the end of its next turn. This trait is also disrupted while the Displacer Beast is incapacitated or has a speed of zero. Now, this definitely makes them much harder to hit, but, you know, once they are hit, uh, then they are more vulnerable. 85 hit points is uh, not a lot if your party are tactical and concentrate fire. But once again, let's take a quick look at their ability called Avoidance. Avoidance. If the Displacer Beast is subjected to an effect that allows it to make a saving throw to take only half damage, it instead takes no damage if it succeeds on the saving throw, and only half damage if it fails. Now again, this may make them last longer than you might initially have thought, but a lot of it depends on what your PCs can do. Uh, knowing the abilities and spells they are likely to use will give you the best sense of how long one of these would last against your party. Now, looking at its actions, we have two tentacle attacks dealing an average damage of 10 hit points per attack with a plus 6 to hit. Now, this tells me that two or three of these beasts could take down your average level 3 uh, PC in, a, in one turn. So, again, gauging how many of these beasties are too many is a real important step in building a combat encounter that may include them. There we have it, lovely people. What are your thoughts on the adorably terrifying Displacer Beast? Have you had a memorable encounter with one of these beasties? Let us know in the comments down below. And let us know what monsters you would like us to dissect next. Now, as always, take care and keep slaying. If you've enjoyed this content, then please smash that like button, subscribe, share this around online, and uh, come and visit our website, www.lavictoriaproductions.com, to see all our past episodes, as well as our blog posts, and all the stuff that we're currently working on at La Victoria Productions. Why not reach out to us and tell us what you think of our videos? You can reach us on Twitter, 
at Mouth Lab Victoria is our producer. We are also on Instagram. I am Enano LVP, and our producer is Jazzy J Shiro. We're also Lab Victoria Productions on Facebook and LinkedIn. Come on by and let us know what you think.